Hello and welcome back to the channel for coverage of the Vallow Daybell case. I have a bunch of smaller news items to go over with you today, so let's jump right in. First thing, the other day, Nate Eaton had a post on his Facebook account. He says that three people in Fremont County have told him that they were polled by someone doing a survey asking about Chad and Lori, do they think they're guilty, all that kind of stuff. Now, it's not really a big deal. A lot of attorneys on both sides of big profile cases will do this before a trial. You may not have heard of it before. It's not really that big of a deal. Some defense attorneys, and even possibly some prosecutors, will go so far as to create a mock jury to hear maybe some witness testimony or some evidence and get their opinion of it before it goes to trial so they can have a better understanding going forward of how their case presents itself. This is fairly common, and we've seen it in a lot of true crime documentaries the -the behind-the-scenes looks of how a criminal defense attorney will prepare for a very big trial. So, not the biggest deal in the world, but it is a curious thing to note. Now, another big story that came out was from Justin Lum of Fox 10 News. I'm not entirely sure what to make of all of this yet. I've read through the documents. They are up in my Discord server if you want to see them. You can also see them on Justin Lum's Facebook and Twitter, uh, and I'm going to present them here to you. This is some information that was recently released about Joseph Ryan's death. We have several pages of the police incident report. It appears to be two pages missing, so maybe I'll reach out to Justin and see if he's got them. Basically, what it says is that a neighbor called the police to report a foul odor and flies all around Joseph Ryan's apartment, and the police showed up. They could not immediately gain access to the apartment, because the front door was locked from the inside. All right, so that's an important thing to note. Uh, They went around the back and they climbed up to the balcony and went in through a window that was open, although the screen was intact when they got there. An officer removed the screen so they could gain entry into his unit, and he was found on the bed, obviously deceased, a heavy state of decomposition. The original medical examiner's cause of death is also included in these documents. They say it was arteriosclerosis. Now, that's not something that happens as a result of a poisoning, let's say. That's something that's the plaque building up on the inside of your arterial walls over time. Generally, we see that in older people. So what does this all mean? Well, on the surface, just looking at this, it does look like a natural death. Do I believe 100% that Joseph Ryan died a natural death? No, it's too coincidental given everyone else has passed away in connection with Lori. So we're just going to have to take this for what it is and wait and see what the future brings. Justin Lum did reach out to the FBI and ask them to verify a report that was made by another source saying that there was an active investigation. The FBI says, we cannot confirm or deny, so talk to the Phoenix Police Department. That's all we know. That's the information that we have about Joseph Ryan. Now, moving on to another news story. This was also reported by Justin Lum. He has certainly been on top of things this week. My goodness. Lori Vallow's arraignment was vacated and rescheduled for September 10th of this year. She'll be seeing Judge Watkins at 10 a.m. on the 10th. And if that is televised, I will bring that to you live. They just moved the date of the hearing. That's all that really happened. Why? We don't know. They don't tell us that stuff. But there are some rumors flying, as you would imagine. If you look at the two images on the screen right now, these are from the, you know, the online court docket portal where you can go see what's happening. There are two filings here. Felony information filed, one for Lori Vallow, one for Chad Daybell. And everyone is running around assuming that this means there are new felony charges that were filed. That's not what that is. We're all waiting for new felony charges to be filed, and we're hoping for them, but that's not what this is. This is simply the turning over of all of the information from the magistrate court to the district court. It's a very normal procedural filing, so we can all take a deep breath about that. You know, I admit when I first saw that, I was like, what, what, felony charges? But no, I did reach out to my legal friends, and they say, no, this is just handing it over from one court to the next. That's all. So there you go. We'll just have to keep our fingers crossed and wait for more charges some other day. Now, the next bit of news, this is, this is a thing. (laughs) Court TV um, had a story last night talking about a letter that was written by Heather Daybell. Heather Daybell is married to Matt Daybell. Matt Daybell is Chad Daybell's brother. She wrote a very long letter and it was distributed via email to the group of people that she speaks to in their LDS community. All right, she is 
she is not the stake president, but she is, I believe, the stake president of, like, her women's group. So there's a bit of a difference there. So, you know, but she wrote this letter and attempted to explain a little bit about where she stands with the whole Chad Daybell situation. Now, the entire letter is posted up in Discord, so you can go read it there. I'm not going to read it to you here because it's long, it's very wordy, it's very scripture-y. You know, it's it's really written for people of that faith because it's information that they would certainly readily understand. It's very reminiscent to me of the Melanie Gibb letter that was sent to Avow. It talks a lot about being deceived. It talks a lot about Korahor. She mentions that. It talks about the deceiver and Satan and all of that stuff. And that's not something I feel like reading, to be honest. So here I have a quote on the screen. And this part says, Sisters, I have questions. I have questions that I don't think will be answered anytime soon. I don't understand why a family member of mine has done what he has done. I don't understand why my husband and I were blamed and ostracized by our extended family in trying to warn and bring attention to the huge concerns we had about what was happening. I don't understand how we were so unbelievable and he was so believable. Beyond these questions, I have a lot of secondary questions that don't have answers. That's just one paragraph. That's the only one that I could kind of, you know, get through without wanting to throw things. So (laughs) now on one hand, I do feel bad for them. They are not involved in these murders. They are not. I'm not saying that. Everyone, please relax. And can you imagine the shock of finding out that your brother-in-law is involved in the murders of two children? That's got to be absolutely horrific. Now, earlier last year, Matt Daybell, who is Heather's husband, released his own statement. It's up on the screen now. There's also a link to the East Idaho News article about this statement in the description below. So if you want some background on who Matt and Heather are, please go look at that. They have been pretty vocal in the last year, wanting Chad to come out and do the right thing. The next piece of news I have for you today is kind of a fun thing. I'm pretty excited about this. First, we have Adam Herbitz, who I always say his name wrong. I'm really sorry, Adam. Adam Herbitz, as well as Justin Lum of Fox 10 News, Adam Herbitz is of Fox 13 News, and their teams, their whole reporting teams, have been nominated for Emmys as far as their coverage of this case. So I am so excited to see that. I wish them all the best. There are only three news reporters that I follow on a daily basis about this case. Justin Lum, Adam Herbitz, and Nate Eaton. Now, I don't think Nate has been nominated for an Emmy. That makes me very sad because he has done some amazing reporting. So the links for all three of these wonderful men are in the description below. You can follow them on Facebook, Twitter, all that good stuff. They have done some amazing work to bring us all of this information. So congratulations on your nominations. I wish all the best for you. And thank you for keeping us up to date on every little aspect of this case. It is greatly appreciated. All right, so that's all the news today. If you have any questions, feel free to come join us in Discord, give us a talk about it. All of the documents that you've seen today are posted in the Discord server for you to access at your leisure. Discord is free to use, and there is a link to join in the description below. All right, I'm going to keep my eye on the news. Nate Eaton is going to be bringing us a story today about the FBI and how they do their electronic research. That should be fascinating, so keep an eye on his stuff, and I'll talk to you guys soon. Thanks for watching.